welcome to our second weekly roundup of what to look out for in the night sky. I'll be talking about the planets Mercury and Mars, along with what to look out for on the Moon this week. Our constellation of the week is Boötes, and I'll talk about how to spot it and what you can expect to find there. Let's start by taking a peek at the planet Mercury. This week offers the best chance to see Mercury for a while, but it is still quite low to the horizon and it can get lost in the evening twilight. If you have a look towards the west at around quarter past half past ten, just after sunset, and if you do manage to spot it, you could try having a look to see if you can spot its phase if you have a pair of binoculars or a telescope. And just like the Moon and Venus, Mercury does show us a full range of phases and you can see here that on Monday the 1st it is just over uh, sorry just under half illuminated and as we go through the week it is waning towards a crescent phase. If you are Mercury spotting this week then do make sure that the Sun has set before you go searching for Mercury because if you were to accidentally look at the Sun then you could damage your eyes. Uh, sticking with the planets now, let's have a look towards the south. And let's take our date back to Monday and move time onwards to around half past two in the morning. And as we discussed last week, we can see Jupiter and Saturn rising at around two o'clock in the morning. And if we move on another hour to around half past three you can see that Mars has risen and Mars has been quite a tricky customer recently because it has been rising quite late and not much before the Sun and that's made it quite difficult to observe. Now as we go through the coming weeks and months Mars is getting better and better placed for observations. If you are looking for Mars with your naked eye then see if you can make out its orangey red glow. If you have a pair of binoculars or a telescope, then that will intensify that orangey red colour for you. And you should also be able to make out that Mars has a visible disk. If you would like to try and spot some of these surface features on Mars, you will need a larger telescope, so something six inches in diameter or larger. And even then, it can be quite difficult to make out surface features on Mars, even for an experienced observer. And there are some famous stories of astronomers viewing Mars and thinking that they can see structures on Mars that aren't actually there. One example of that is in 1877, the astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli thought that he could make out a network of lines and grooves on the surface of Mars and those were interpreted to be canals by some people and it was thought that intelligent Martians were using these canals to transport water from the poles to the equator of the planet and we now know of course that there are no canals on Mars and there is nobody on Mars moving water around um, but we do know that Mars sometime in the distant past did have running water on the surface. Okay, let's have a look now at our constellation for this week. Boötes, the herdsman. And if we put the constellation art on, you can see that Boötes appears next to Ursa Major in the night sky. And last week we talked about the story in Greek mythology of Ursa Major, who was Callisto, who had been turned into a bear and had been cast into the night sky along with her son Arcas. And in one version of the story, it is thought that Boötes, the herdsman, is Arcas, so Callisto and her son next to each other in the night sky. Let's 
take the art off and talk about how we can find Boötes. And the easiest way is if you look for the Big Dipper and follow the arc of the handle of the Big Dipper all the way down to Arcturus. So follow the arc to Arcturus. And Arcturus is the brightest star in Boötes, but it's also one of the brightest stars in the night sky. So it should be fairly easy to spot. And Arcturus is interesting because it is a red giant star and in about 5 billion years time our sun will also become a red giant star. So it's a little bit like looking into the future. And eventually Arcturus will lose its outer layers and what will be left behind will be a small white dwarf. Let's finish this week by taking a look at the moon. So I'm going to go back to Monday and I'm going to go back to around half past ten. And let's zoom in and have a look at the phase of the moon. So you can see that at the beginning of the week we have a waxing gibbous phase and if we move onwards in time you'll see that by Friday the 5th we have a full moon. And last week we talked about these dark areas on the moon, um, the lunar seas, and this week you could try spotting one of the seas in particular, which is the Sea of Tranquility, and I'm ringing that with my mouse now. And I'm just going to place my mouse pointer in the middle of the Sea of Tranquility, and talk to you a little bit about the history of the Sea of Tranquility. So it's famous because it was the site of the first lunar landing, um, Apollo 11, and it was chosen for Apollo 11 because it was thought to be fairly smooth and fairly flat, uh, which makes it a, a good place to land your first lunar mission. When Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were descending to the lunar surface in the lunar module, they realised that actually the area that they were going to land on was strewn with boulders and they had to switch to manual control of the lunar module and Neil Armstrong managed to land but he only had about 20 seconds of fuel left in the lunar module so it was quite a scary situation for everybody involved. So that brings us to the end of our night sky tour for this week and I'll be back again next week to talk about what's visible in the night sky for week beginning June the 8th.